If you're an athlete, you have likely faced times when pain or an injury made you question whether to keep training or take a break. This can be a hard choice because the right call is important for your long-term health and athletic success. Knowing when to push through and when to rest helps avoid serious injuries and keeps you on track with your goals. Here are some quick tips to guide you in making the best decision when it comes to training with pain or injuries. One, understand the difference between soreness and pain. After a hard workout, it's normal to feel sore. This soreness, called delayed onset muscle soreness or domes, is caused by tiny muscle tears that repair and grow stronger over time. Domes usually shows up a day or two after exercise and fades within a few days. However, sharp or sudden pain is different and often signals an injury. Pain that comes on suddenly, especially if it's intense, could mean you have strained or torn something. If you are feeling this kind of pain, it is best to stop and assess what might be going wrong. Do not confuse soreness with pain, as pushing through pain can lead to more serious injuries. Two, listen to your body. Your body constantly sends signals that can help you understand if something is wrong. If you are feeling an unusual ache or discomfort, it is a sign to pay closer attention. Continuing to push through can sometimes make things worse, causing minor injuries to become major ones. Discomfort that worsens as you train or pain that disrupts your sleep is a clear warning sign. This is especially true if the pain does not go away after resting for a bit. Ignoring these signals can lead to longer recovery times, so it is essential to listen to your body and adjust your training as needed. Three, start with light activity. If you suspect you might have an injury but are not sure, begin with light activities to test how your body responds. Low impact exercises like walking, swimming, or gentle stretching can help you gauge the pain level without adding extra strain. Start slow and pay attention to any pain or discomfort, especially if it gets worse during or after the activity. If you experience no pain with light movement, you may be okay to continue training, but with caution. However, if even gentle movement causes pain, it is a sign you need to stop and allow for more recovery. Four, do not ignore swelling and bruising. Swelling and bruising are two signs that your body is trying to heal something that has been hurt. Swelling happens when fluid collects around the injured area, which usually means some form of tissue damage. Bruising is another clear indicator that an injury has occurred, often due to broken blood vessels under the skin. Both of these signs suggest that your body needs time to repair, so pushing through can worsen the injury. If you notice any unexpected swelling or bruising, it is wise to pause training. Give your body a chance to heal properly and consider seeing a medical professional if swelling or bruising does not improve. Five, use the pain scale. The pain scale is a helpful way to understand the severity of your pain and decide what action to take. Rate your pain on a scale from one to 10, where one to three is mild, four to six is moderate, and anything above six is severe. Mild pain may be manageable and you could continue training carefully, paying close attention to any increase in intensity. Moderate pain is a signal to lower the workout intensity and avoid movements that could worsen it. Severe pain of seven or above is a clear sign to stop all training until you have had more rest or seen a professional. Tracking your pain level over time can also help you see if it's improving or getting worse. Six, remember the 72 hour rule. The 72 hour rule is a useful guideline for determining if your pain needs further attention. If you experience pain that does not improve or even gets worse after resting for 72 hours, this might be more than just a simple strain or soreness. Persistent pain usually indicates that something is not healing as it should and needs extra recovery time. Continuing to train through it can delay healing or worse, cause a more severe injury. Instead of pushing forward, take this time to rest and reassess. If the pain hasn't improved by then, consider getting professional advice. 7. Seek professional advice. When in doubt, sometimes pain can be confusing or hard to identify on your own. If you are unsure whether your pain is serious, do not hesitate to seek advice from a doctor, physical therapist, or sports medicine specialist. A professional can help you understand the cause of your pain and provide a treatment plan suited to your injury. They can also give you safe exercises that will not interfere with healing. Having a clear answer can save you time and stress and it prevents the risk of making the injury worse. Never feel embarrassed about asking for help as it is often the smartest step. 
Knowing when to keep going and when to rest can protect you from long-term injuries and help you stay on track with your fitness goals. While minor soreness is normal after a good workout, real pain is often a signal that something is wrong. By learning to listen to your body, paying attention to signs like swelling, and using tips like the pain scale and the 72-hour rule, you can train more wisely and recover faster. Remember, it is always okay to get professional help if you are unsure.